Mass production methods involve the use of computer-controlled machines, press tools, molds, jigs and guides, so individual pieces do not need to be marked out accurately before being cut and shaped. However, if it's not practical to set up and use a CNC machine for a one-off part or a small batch of parts, or you don't have access to an appropriate CNC machine, then materials must be marked out accurately in order to make parts that are the correct size and shape. This video will show you the tools that can be used to measure things accurately. We'll start with the most common of all measuring tools, the steel rule. Steel rules usually have millimetre markings along one edge and half millimetre markings along the other. Measurements start at the end of the steel rule. The steel rule should be stood on its edge on the material to be measured. A scriber or sharp pencil may be slid down the measurement groove onto the material. Two marks are made, forming a V-shape. The correct measurement is at the tip of the V. Tape measures are like long steel rules called inside a plastic case. Steel tape measures typically range from 3 meters to 10 meters long. This tool is called a micrometer. It is used to measure small objects very accurately. Metric micrometers have millimeter markings and half millimeter markings. The spindle moves half a millimetre for every complete revolution of the thimble. The circumference of the thimble is divided into 50 equal divisions. Each division is a 50th of half a millimetre, that is one hundredth of a millimetre. The spindle moves a hundredth of a millimetre for every division on the thimble and half a millimetre, that is fifty hundredths, for every complete revolution. Micrometers used to measure things to an accuracy of one hundredth of a millimetre. The spindle is tightened on an object with a ratchet stop, never with the thimble. The reading of the micrometer sleeve is 6.5 millimetres and of the micrometer thimble it is 0.48 millimetres. 6.5 plus 0.48 equals 6.98 so the diameter of the blue bar is 6.98 millimetres. A digital micrometer works in the same way but the measurement is shown on a liquid crystal display or LCD. A vernier caliper has two sets of measurements, one set in millimetres and one set in fiftieths of a millimetre, that is 0.02 of a millimetre. Measurements on the main scale are in millimetres just like on a ruler. Each measurement on the vernier scale is 0.02 of a millimetre. Here's another example. This time the measurements shown are from 0.4 of a millimetre to 0.5 of a millimetre. The naught line on the vernier scale is just past the 26 millimetre line on the main scale, so the round bar is just over 26 millimetres in diameter. Next, we check which line on the vernier scale lines up precisely with a line on the main scale. 26.36 and 0.38 and 0.4 and 0.42 and 0.44 line up with the measurements on the main scale so my drawing is not accurate enough to get a good reading off the vernier caliper. So we'll take a reading off a real vernier caliper. The naught line on the vernier scale is just past the 9mm mark on the main scale. In my opinion, the 0.42 mark lines up the best, so the measurement is 9.42mm. A digital vernier caliper is very easy to use and to read. Simply switch on the caliper, close it completely, press the zero button if the reading is not zero, then take the measurement. A height gauge is used for measuring the height of objects. It has a measurement scale, like a ruler, and may also have a vernier scale. A height gauge with a vernier scale is called a vernier height gauge. Some modern height gauges have digital displays. A digital display is clearer and more easily read than a vernier scale, so the user is less likely to take incorrect readings. The clear display is easy to read. A depth gauge is used for measuring the depth of holes. It may have measurement markings or it may have parts like a micrometer. This is called a micrometer depth gauge. 
Internal calipers use the gauging internal measurements. Measurements are read off using a steel rule. There are two types of internal caliper, a firm joint internal caliper and a spring bow internal caliper. External calipers are used for gauging external measurements. Measurements are read off using a steel rule. There are two types of external caliper, the spring bowl external caliper and the firm joint external caliper. The spiral groove around the shank of a screw or bolt is called a screw thread. There are various shapes and sizes of screw threads. Three types of screw threads are shown, the isometric thread, the square thread and the buttress thread. A screw thread is identified by the angle of the flanks. A screw thread is identified by its pitch by its depth of thread and by other features such as the overall height of the thread, the radius at the root and the size at the crest. A screw pitch gauge may be used to identify the shape and pitch of the screw thread. The pitch is stated in the number of teeth per inch, that is TPI, for example 16 TPI. A dial gauge is used to test concentricity and flatness. When the spring-loaded shaft is pressed, it moves the needle on the dial in steps of one hundredth of a millimeter. The small inner dial has markings in steps of half a millimeter and whole millimeters. The large outer dial has markings in steps of one hundredth of a millimeter. An example of the use of a dial gauge is when it is used to centre round bar held in a three-jaw chuck on a lathe. Test the bar with the dial gauge, then tap the high spot. Repeat the procedure until the bar turns with no movement of the dial gauge needle. The bar is concentric and running true when there is no movement in the dial gauge needle. Digital dial gauges are used in the same way as mechanical dial gauges However, they can display measurements in both inches and millimetres. Feeler gauges are used for gauging the size of gaps between components. Feeler gauge thicknesses typically go up in steps of five hundredths of a millimetre from 0.05 millimetres to one millimetre. Above one millimetre, a combination of gauges are used, for example, one millimetre plus 0.35 millimetres to give you 1.35 millimetres. One of the most common uses of a feeler gauge is to set the gap on a spark plug. Gauges are a quick way of checking sizes. Standard gauges are used to measure one specific size. Limit gauges are used to check that a material or component is within specific upper and lower size limits. Tolerance is the permitted size difference from a preferred measurement. The hole is the correct size if the go end of the plug gauge fits in the hole and the no go end does not. Ring gauges are used to test the size of shafts. A standard ring gauge has a hole machined precisely to the nominal size. Go and no go limit ring gauges are machined to specific lower and upper tolerance limits. Go no go gauges are also called go not go gauges. Drill sizes are stamped on the shanks of drills. If the size cannot be seen, then a drill gauge may be used to gauge the size of the drill. A drill gauge has a set of precisely drilled holes with the hole size stamped alongside each hole. The size of the drill can be determined by noting which hole the drill fits into firmly. However, measuring a drill across the lands with a micrometer is a more precise way of finding the size of a drill than using a drill gauge. Spirit levels are used to measure horizontal and vertical planes. Some spirit levels can also be used to measure planes angled at 45 degrees. The most important part of a spirit level is the clear plastic or glass vial that contains a fluid, usually ethanol, 
and a small amount of air that forms a bubble. The bubble always rises to the highest point of the slightly convex vial. When the vial is tilted, the bubble moves to the highest point. The spirit level is perfectly horizontal when the bubble is precisely between the two guidelines on the vial. The sensitivity of the spirit level is determined by the radius of curvature of the vial. The greater the radius, the greater the sensitivity of the vial and therefore the spirit level. For example, to move the bubble two millimeters from the central position, one end of a meter long spirit level would have to be lifted 66.62 millimeters if the vial had a 30 millimeter radius and only a 50th of a millimeter if the vial had a 100 meter radius. The spirit levels are used in all sorts of applications that require a horizontal surface to be set up or measurements from a horizontal plane to be taken, for instance as used in a theodolite. Radius gauges are used to gauge the size of internal and external radii. A protractor is used for measuring and marking out angles. Electronic devices and measuring tools with electronic displays are being developed all the time. These devices can help people measure more easily and can speed up the measuring process. Examples of this are the digital laser measure and the ultrasonic tape measure. A digital laser measure or an ultrasonic tape measure is pointed at a solid object and the distance between the object and the measuring device is displayed. There are digital displays on other tools such as tape measures, linear calipers, micrometers and spirit levels. Finally, I'd like to thank you for watching and I hope that you found this video helpful.